Hello everyone. Today's talk is titled Contemplations of an Exotic Avenger. <laughs> and so before I really get into what that means, let us for a second find ourselves on the mountains of the Himalayas standing not in robes and garments but just as how we are dressed right now and let us just assume that we have just stood there and we're watching the vastness of the world that is that landscape it's sunset and there's a silence in the air there's a silence that each person who is standing right now observing the sunset in the Himalayas is just within themselves. They are not communicating to anyone, but they are comfortably with them. It's as if once the being is internally happy, then suddenly there is great devotion to other. Once there's great devotion to self. And as we're standing there, we begin to see that our whole life, we have been trying to seek a justification that satisfies even though we are constantly changing and so as we stand there we begin to see in, in, in a few meters to the side in a distant cave a yogi comes out and it's as if this yogi for us just being there already knows that we are there and we're not physically there actually we are there in presence and in thought and what that means is that it's as if we are the exotic Avengers, in a sense, contemplating uh, what the life of the simplicity of man leads to. And so the yogi smiles in a silence. As that yogi comes down, he sits on a rock and begins meditating. We begin seeing that Perhaps this person has not acknowledged us. <laughs> As some of our friends may think. But suddenly we begin to see that we are the new view. And as new vision goes into uh, environments it has never been before, its contemplation becomes simultaneous. Because it's, it's not just like seeing uh, all your friends in the same room, it's like seeing uh, uh, every world that, that all, each friend has in the same room. So it's as if when worlds blend, our perception is multidimensional. So simply your remembrance of this will rec make you recognize how the edge of your mind was the transient step into expanding a certain geometry even though that geometry was never you. We perceive in our gaze and we see that the world has many things to offer. And many of us have been seeking sound, have been seeking noise for greater understanding. But how many of us have listened to life in the absolute silence where thought cannot even originate because you are the observance uh, that is simply present. It's like just that first second when you sat on a chair, just that instant of no thought. Do you, do you see? Imagine having that throughout the whole day and you will begin seeing that you will go into the worst environment and nothing will affect you because you are aware that your silence is your preservation. Many people fear silence. Many people think that they have been silenced and they have not spoken. That is true on one aspect in the sense that your idea needs to be communicated. If you're just keeping your idea of self to yourself, you're not co-creating with others to be more real. So the shy person needs to begin co-creating on subtler levels and leading into a co-creation with others in which you will see. I, at first you are shy to communicate, but the minute you do, you are communicating a world to others. And as you communicate your world, others engage. You must have the flexibility that does not uh, need, um, in a sense, uh, encouragement or disencouragement, you know. We're just, we're, we are present. And if when you know your being, your walk is comfortable. If you think your being is relevant to others, no. 
to be honest, it's not relevant externally. There's, there's, it's a multi-dimensional scenario. The spiritual problem is problematic because on one level, uh, the minds of, uh, uh, that are studying our sciences are perceiving uh, things from an objective law. So the law is that we're objective first and then everything. Uh, and so it's crazy because when we look at others as objective, when we look at ourselves and who we are, it's as if we, it's like we have thoughts, it's subjective experience, right? So it's just as if like we are acknowledging something one dimensionally uh, and even though every being is multidimensionally experiencing things, you know? When we see simply that we have a dream state, there were Zen masters back in the day who suddenly saw that that in a dream he was a butterfly, right? And that Zen master woke him and he's like, oh my God, am I a butterfly dreaming I'm a Zen master? I'm a Zen master dreaming I'm a butterfly. And so as he observed, you realize you are none of them because you're the ability to be both. So you see, you need to begin acknowledging reality as a comfortable, formless, existential observance rather than one associated with thoughts that give you a shape which gives you too much movement. The intensity of the roller coaster ride that is your life process and your walk from your birth to your death is simply uh, that you need to become aware of it and you need to be playful because if you are not, you are not giving yourself opportunities into utilizing what you're creating. So for example, you're a human being here. You must create some amount and then really appreciate and learn from the amount of your creation. Take your creation as a serious thing. That moment where in the morning you're pouring coffee for yourself, don't take that as just a simple valueless act. Because if you do, you have the choice of seeing things as objects, you know? And so I think that is the problem, no, in all the crime and things we have, in the sense that people are not understanding that presence is beyond the personality that is objectified. So what that means is that I don't, I don't, for example, do crimes, not because it's wrong or it's illegal, because I cannot. My presence will not allow me because I am so aware of the harmony of the moment. You know, many people, are, our media shows that the villains usually have gadgets which the super, it's gonna, you know, trouble the superhero or something, right? The hero. So we begin seeing in that dynamic, we have been given more imagery of our condemnation because our psychology has been greeting. So gosh, man was just a greedy animal. That's how the design was. So our, we have this whole history of psychology built on how darkness is somehow here. <laughs> You know, and so it's very important that we immediately make ourselves playful regardless if we are seeing the most chaotic form or we are seeing the most ordered form. Because in playfulness you are the confrontation that is playing with all life. So when I begin to have a problem or anything that comes my way where it, it, it's making me in a sense want to avenge something or whatever, you know, I immediately stop the idea and so I am present. And so I sit still and I go in nature and I look around and I'm like, do I need to put all this energy into satisfying a psychological need? Because I'm pretty sure I've had many days where I've wanted to, <laughs> I've wanted to in a sense very aggressively communicate to some people. But suddenly as I've stopped and let myself time to in a sense not get angry and stuff, just stop myself before, uh, I shoot madness. <laughs> uh, I handled my anger by stopping any attempt into uh, giving it shape. So how I, in a sense, came out of it was that I just left it and the next day my mindset was clear and I realized, gosh, thank God I didn't say all that garbage which I could have created in the moment. We can create garbage out of nothing. And you know, that's, and that's something bad I, I've seen in human psychology that uh, we use we sometimes find it acceptable socially to talk in condemnation. It's as if you see certain friends are talking very, very, uh, very dark about how humanity should be, for example. You know? And when you see that, it's not that it's right or wrong, it's, it's simply that why the creation of imagery that does not serve uh, all those human beings who, if they weren't here, you'd be the last person on earth. We have been put in a thought where our imagery is defining us. 
we must as existential awareness perceive ourselves through our multi-dimensional nature uh, as the observer of the image so if i just if you just had a pen in your hand and you brought this pen in front of your face you would see that this pen okay this uh mitsubishi pencil co pen <laughs> You begin seeing this pen and you see that you are observing it. So if you are observing something, you are obviously in a greater space of existence than the pen, right? So the moment you observe something, you are not the object of observance, you are the observer. And so having this crucial understanding and cultivating this in your own way, in other words, taking this idea and seeing what the observer of life means rather than a constant object which has to be kept in a certain way, you begin seeing that sometimes the most uh, beautiful emanations of the human being come from its allowance to let go of all the things it feels it has to do. When you let go of realities that were just weight, you are choosing to live in a certain way. Do you know? You're choosing it. Every day you're choosing it. And you think you might have, you know, life's tough and you got to go work. And I, I don't disagree, you know, especially with the systems we have, you know, with our financial systems. But how you receive your life throughout the day has nothing to do with your condition. Your state of being is that vertical dimension, which is uh, your observance that you are beyond the cycles of karma. You are beyond the fluctuation of form. For information was never here to form you. It's just that you perceived yourself in that form in which the information became meaningful. And so right now, it's as if in our society and in our cultures, we have not created room to confront the other aspects of certain views. So what that means is that, for example, we're still trying to do things, uh, deciding like to do things based on uh, the, the good or the bad. Do you know how limited that is? It, the good and the bad should be spiraling into infinite uh, possibilities. And so there's never a good and bad because there's always a cycle of change in which your awareness is a, is, is, is a movement into greater knowing. As we look at that sunset, we begin to see that the yogi is looking at it too, but he's looking at it with his being. And we, for a second, forget our superiority, our ability, our greatness, and see that it is in our tolerance that reality is revealed to us. Revelation is not something that just you, you gotta say, oh, I want revelation, and it comes. Revelation is your sincere uh, awareness and tuning with what is the realest thing for you in this cosmos. And when you look at that realest thing, you might find that there's a crack, and in that crack, there is complete uh, emptiness and totality. Because emptiness does not mean that you are not present. <laughs> emptiness means that it is unspeakable. And so in that unspeakable aspect, individuation was never individuation. When unification was what was keeping our worlds afloat. The contemplations of an exotic avenger may playfully suggest that you must through your self-awareness and self-observance and self-remembrance look at this existence in a way where you are not trying to change anything. Because as long as you are trying to externally change it, as you're trying to like, you know, avenge, your, avenge something, you know, or you're trying to, for example, uh, put someone in their place or give someone the punishment they should have, you know, you must perceive, you must observe, and you must see how much life are you allowing in your reality to be present. 
Are you treating people like objects or are you seeing that they are life? You know? <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, you, 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 don't, you, you don't injure your, uh, let's say, you don't, you don't injure your hand, for example. You know, you don't hurt your body. Why are you hurting uh, the body of humanity? Why are you uh, hurting the body of humankind? Because it is, it is the kindness uh, that is the existential allowance that provides man. In a sense, the collective knowing that his individual is always here, but also not. <laughs> Get lost in your ecstatic dances in this reality. Uh, realize that those people who don't make sense to you are some of your greatest teachers. <laughs> because some teachers are here to teach you about the order, and there are some teachers which are moments in your life uh, that are chaotic teachers. It's a sudden fluctuation. Suddenly you get pushed back. Uh, suddenly uh, uh, pushed back in a way where you're losing content, for example. You know? You're losing, you're being left behind. When life pushes you back, that means, uh oh time to become existentially sensitive. Begin observing what existence means to you. Become your own mystic. Become, uh, have the yogi's enthusiasm. Realize you don't need to go in a cave, but you do require silence to observe the clarity in what you see. Silence and stillness are here to serve you in a world where there is movement and that movement is uh, creating a noise that is our confusion. Clarity is right here. It's simultaneously present. Uh, let yourself be not in a freedom that has image, but a freedom that is the greatest ability in a normal moment of being. Because the moment of being is where the being <laughs> will be when any sense of de destruction or anything comes. Anything that life throws at you, you're always handling it in your moment of being. Don't worry, you're not leaving your moment of being. Actually, you are the moment of being. Any form you see is as much of a body for you as your physicality. But that is based on your taste. Because uh, realization does not mean that the link for your individual presence here is disconnected. You can choose, but this is me saying it very playfully and it's actually an unspeakable thing. So I don't have to actually talk about it. If you are a being who has an, that ability, your intuition will, will be your uh, remembrance into the absolute, you know? I hope this uh, talk has served you. It's very important to see that we need to begin uh, observing reality in ways never done before. You are a being uh, before you are just some human, you know? You are a moment of being before you're some human. And so be aware of what your humanity means and see what is the greatest thing you're receiving in this moment. Perhaps after this talk, uh, find a page and just begin writing all those ideas that are coming in. Allow realities to integrate. Allow your mind not to be your mind, but just be present in all existence. And realize that compassion will align you to flows that are more efficient, more able, and more, I don't want to say loving, but clear. You have different states of being. Do not forget, horizontal dimension, as I'm saying playfully now, uh, all your externality, you know, and your consideration. In other words, you're like, oh, I got an external mode and your internal mode. But that's still in the horizontal dimension. The vertical dimension of it is that there is no internal external. It's suddenly just an awareness to all that the horizontal can be. Because you begin saying, oh my God, I thought I was only this one guy uh, in this one world. <laughs> but it seems that this one world is present within many worlds. And so this one guy is never one guy when he's present in many worlds. So what that means is that relationship is actually uh, an ability to see beyond your idea. So what that means is you don't put away your name. 
but you use it as a vehicle in which it's moving you and you're observing through it. You don't put away your ego. You don't try to destroy your, you don't try to get rid of your desires as an idea. It doesn't work that way. What is actually required is simple contemplation. Trust me, think about it this way. You want a solution that at the end of it take, puts you in a very gentle, calm, happy state. A gentle, calm, happy state is one where there's less movement. So automatically, stillness and silence, again, are a great platform to begin your contemplations and your ability to journey within yourself. As all projection of reality is kept projected. Become aware of the light that you are. And through these considerations, you will see that the greatest thing you can confront in this life is not something that uh, you do not know yet, actually, I'm going to say in this context. It's something which you know what you're not looking at. That is where the true treasures are revealed. It's the intelligence of the field rather than one line of grass. And you will reach a point where you will see that you are receiving a lot from your internal dimensions and you're getting some form of horizontal ver vertical experience as well you know so what that means is you you might not have uh, the, the the profoundest experience in your view but you at the same time have a more profound experience than you and this is actually how many seekers uh, of of the great mystery of life find themselves because the whole point is the mystery is not revealed you know, you know some things more about it, but it's not revealed. So where is this revelation? And that's the thing, because uh, some people are <laughs> uh, mystics uh, that use a different sense of engineering, where they begin saying, before I walk into any reality, uh, who, how am I receiving my sense of space and time? And once you acknowledge and become that greater observance beyond space and time, once you have that moment where everything stops to begin, You begin seeing that existential knowing has nothing to do with the horizontal dimensions. And again, I'm saying ver vertical dimension here, but this metaphor is also uh, limited because uh, it's, it's much more than that. It's so much more that our cultures and societies has, have not even created the language for us to even define it. So what that means is we need to begin communicating and communicating in a way where we're adjusting our internal visions to the, to, to the collective. So every writer who communicated his world, you know, uh, is a profound thing. I think one of the greatest technologies of the man is the fact that we have quotes online. And you know, even though there are some inaccuracies in quotes sometimes, uh, but regardless, you know, you, you are utilizing image. And so the user will see that it was never him using anything. You were just life. And as you are alive, your knowing is an ability to be all that you can be in an instant where <laughs> the new has become now. The contemplations of an exotic avenger are always profound. Because vengeance is never a solution when the problem didn't make sense. <laughs> Much blessings and honesty.